Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to introduce Almond Conference sponsor, Tomra. Tomra provides industry-leading sorting solutions for many different types of nuts and dried fruit. In addition to finding and removing any foreign material and defective products, their optical sorting technologies can also detect aflatoxin and imperfections that are hidden inside the product. Today we'll learn more about how they use a line configuration strategy and how rethinking our approach can lead to increased efficiency and more productivity. Please help me welcome Global Director of Nuts and Dried Fruit, Brendan O'Donnell. All right, well, hello. Uh, today, I'm really excited to be talking to you because normally when we give these kinds of talks, we talk about you know, what's the newest kind of technology or what's the newest kind of optic or the newest kind of machine. Uh, last year, we talked about Tomer's digital transformation, you know, things about all the data that comes through these sorters and what we do with the data. Uh, the year before that, we launched our brand new flagship 5C machine. But today, I wanna talk a little bit more about what we've learned visiting other types of processing, other types of tree nuts, and what we might be able to bring to the almond industry. I came to Tomra uh, about four years ago from the almond processing industry. And for me, one of the things that I was the most excited to see was all the other kinds of tree nuts, how they're grown, where they're grown, how most importantly, of course, how they get from the farm to the table. So today I'll just do a lightning fast overview. Just, we only have 20 minutes and I wanna look at a few different types of nut crops. So we'll go really fast, but then we'll draw some comparisons between them. So here's our agenda for today. Uh, I'm just gonna take a couple minutes on this first part. It's just an update about Tomer's business. Uh, we're a, a global company publicly traded on the Norwegian Stock Exchange. So I'll share some figures that are all just public information. Um, and then I wanna jump into a few different processing lines. So you're probably all familiar with the INC data down here at the bottom about what are the biggest tree nuts that are produced. And we all know that the biggest five, it's kind of like the big five that make up 95% of all the tree nuts in the world are almonds, walnuts, cashews, hazelnuts, and pistachios. I'm not gonna talk about cashews because they're just too different. They're grown in areas where minimum wage is $5 per day, things like that. It's a lot of manual sorting and it's just too hard to compare the two. So I'm gonna compare the other four today. Okay, so all about Tomra. Uh, Tomra uh, is uh, the leader in, in optical sorting. We're the largest optical sorting company in the world. Uh, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary, just like the Almond Conference. So we've got that in common. A lot of good things in 1972. Um, our revenue is now roughly 1.1 billion US dollars. Uh, this, of course, is all in uh, Norwegian krona. So I'm just doing a, a rough uh, calculation there. We have roughly 4,600 employees now, and we operate in more than 100 countries around the world. Most of you know our business, uh, mostly from this blue section, uh, which is our food business. But our food business is only about a third of our total revenue. We actually get about half of our revenue from reverse vending. So these are actually how we got our start. These are the machines where you put in your empty bottle, your empty can, and it gives you your five cents, your California Redemption five cents that you can use to spend in the store. That's 50% of our revenue. That's a big piece of our business. The center section here is recycling. And although it's only 2% of our business, I always like talking about mining because they're the ones that always have these stories about Tomra machines discovered the newest, largest diamond ever to be discovered in, on earth. So they're always the ones getting out the good stories. For the food portion of our business, I mentioned already that we're roughly one third of the total revenue. So we'll just say about 330 million US dollars is on our food part of the business. We have almost 13,000 machines now installed in food. And that's across over 86 countries. I guess over 86 means 87. I'm not sure, but that's how many it is. And then we also have offices to support no matter where you are in the world. So today, since we're at the Almond Conference, we'll focus on almonds. We've got offices in Australia. We've got partners and offices in Spain. And of course, one of our biggest offices in the entire world is right across the street in West Sacramento. So we've got a lot of support here. People with spare parts, all of that stuff to support this area. Now, one of the reasons that I love this slide is that since Tomer is the largest optical sorting company in the world, that means we have a lot of different tools at our disposal. So yes, we can use RGB cameras, but we can also use lasers, and we can also use pulse LED technology, and x-ray, and spectroscopy. So there's a lot of different types of technology that we'll use so that we're always using the right tool for the right job that you need to get done. 
This is my last slide about Tomra, but I always have to show the slide. I love the slide because we're a technology company. And if you're not investing into the future, then you're just living a slow death. So we really have to show here that we've got 16% over all of our employees that are invested into R&D. I mentioned we've got 4,600 employees. That's more than 700 people that are in R&D. We talk about 42 different patent families that are owned, 8% of revenue. We talked about revenue, 1.1 billion. That's $88 million a year that goes back into R&D from a revenue perspective. And we've got partnerships with R&D institutions, universities, and other. The most important box down here is that we develop a lot of our own sensors. So we're not buying parts off the shelf that we put into these machines. A lot of the parts of our machines are patented. They're things that only Tomer can do because we build them ourselves. All right, so let's talk about sorting lines. The first line I'll talk about is walnuts. And walnuts are really interesting because coming from an almond processor, you have to remember walnuts always start off as in-shell, which, yeah, almonds start off as in-shell too, but most of the time you're receiving meats from the hull or shell. In walnuts, because of rancidity issues, because of shelf life issues, you've got to bring it all in as in-shell and only crack it out and sort it when you're ready to pack it. So that means that if you're starting off as in-shell, you need a high capacity x-ray sorter. In this case, we're showing the Tomer 5X. You put this sorter in front of the crackers because you want to be able to remove things like rocks, glass, metal, anything that could potentially damage your cracker or damage the product together as it goes through the cracker. Now, unlike almonds, when it comes out of the cracker, you're dealing with a lot of walnuts and a lot of shell all at the same time. So there's, there's plenty of aspiration, there's plenty of sizing in order to try to screen that shell off, but in the walnut industry, they're dealing with a lot more shell than the almond industry deals with at the beginning part of their process. So for that reason, we oftentimes will put one machine right there in the shelling line, and usually it's on the halves because that's the largest volume coming off of the sheller. But we put that machine there because it's able to reject all of the shell coming out right there and re-loop it right back into a recracker. And that's important for one very big reason. That's the area where you get boats. And a boat is where you get a half of a walnut shell that still has a half of a good walnut kernel inside, and you have to be able to break that apart and reclaim that walnut. So we do that right there at the cracker. The next stage from there, we're gonna get into more of our traditional sorting line. So this is the area where you could think of as, as the sorting process really starts. Now, in the first machine here, we're going to continue to focus on foreign material. So that means allergens, shell, membrane, fiber. And since we're targeting mostly foreign material, we can just use our multispectral BSI plus technology in this position. That's going to give you a very low false reject, and it's also going to be extremely effective at removing foreign material without a machine that's enormously expensive. The next machine in the line is probably the hardest working machine out of this group. This is where you start targeting things like butterball, which is the two halves of the walnut that are still stuck together, where you can only see a very, very thin piece of membrane in between them. And that, for that reason, we end up using more of a laser focus. Now we'll also use BSI Plus. That's one of the nice things about this machine. You can have two different technologies at the same time. So we're gonna use both laser and BSI Plus. We're gonna target the dark black walnuts, we're gonna target any remaining foreign material, which isn't much, but still some, and we're gonna target Butterball. Now the third machine starts to get interesting on technology because now we've removed pretty much all of the foreign material, and you don't necessarily need that BSI sensor anymore. So on that third machine, we're gonna focus really heavily on laser. And we use laser because the main things we're looking for in this case our color defects. This is where you're separating light from extra light or light from amber. And it's also where you're getting the very last bits of the butterball that's coming through. The important thing to note about this entire line is that you are running this line by segregating your defects into different areas. You're not trying to have every machine do everything all the time. So you want very specific reject streams. Now, not every walnut processor does this, but I listed it just because it is kind of a neat thing that, that some people will do. Uh, you can use a belt-based machine at the very end of your line. And what's neat about this belt-based machine is that you can have 360-degree vision around that walnut. So there is no piece of that walnut that is unseen, which means if you're looking for dark spots that are maybe in some little nooks and crannies inside the walnut, this machine will see it. So this is a really nice machine to have as just a final inspection, and it can also increase your percentage of halves by rejecting the smaller pieces. Okay. Now, pistachios are fun, and I know we have some pistachio people in here, and I hope you don't get offended, but pistachios have had it really easy relative to almonds. 
And I say that because imagine if 90% of your crop went out as inshell. Your life would be a lot easier from an almond perspective. But this is changing. And it's changing for a few different reasons. When you're looking at an inshell operation, you're really only looking at removing a few different things. You want to remove foreign material, obviously, and you want to remove uh, defects that are on the shell. So it might be adhering hull, might be cocoa puff, stain, or damaged by other means, commonly known as debomb, which is the most fun defect that we have. But the pistachio kernel market has been growing at 50% per year. And if you ask professionals in the pistachio industry what is going on and why is this market growing so unbelievably fast, they'll tell you it's all these millennials that require instant gratification and are too lazy to crack out the nuts. Whether that's true or not, it's still a fun story, but we do know that the 50% growth per year is real. So that means the pistachio industry is now into a whole new world. And in this case, they're going to need to separate several different things. So let's talk first of all about machine one. Machine one is a foreign material machine. We're looking for allergens, sticks, stones, how stones come out of a pistachio tree into a catch frame, I don't know, but we do need to remove those. Then you have separately, you're not removing shell. You are not removing shell on that first machine. And that's because most of the shell that comes through this line still has a good pistachio in it. So you don't want to throw it away. So we're going to have two separate machines to be able to remove one foreign material and two shell. So when you remove that shell, you can send that back to a recracking line where you're going to break that apart and you're going to reclaim that good pistachio from that line. The third machine is where you really start looking for those quality defects. Now pistachios, just like almonds, deal with a lot of navel orange worm. So we're going to focus on worm damage in this case, any other kind of mold rancidity, that kind of thing. But one of the things that's important to, to take note of when you're looking at pistachios, a normal color sorter has a really hard time with pistachios because good color pistachios are red and green and brown and purple and yellow. All, basically all the colors uh, are, can be considered good in a pistachio. So we really don't use a lot of color when we're sorting pistachios. We rely heavily in the infrared spectrum for this. Now, since we needed two machines at the front of the line, one for foreign material and one for the in-shell, we like to put one machine at the very end of the line here. This is basically your quality machine. This is the machine that gets you into a, uh, basically what we can call a confectionery grade, low foreign material. This is your high quality product that comes out of this machine. Now, since you've got several machines in front of this, the reject from this is not going to be high volume. It's going to be low volume. It's just getting out the remaining bits of, of damage that you might have in the product. All right, hazelnuts. So when you think about a hazelnut line, you know, if I, if I say, what do you think of when you think of hazelnuts? A lot of people will say chocolate or maybe some brand name that includes uh, like a chocolate hazelnut paste. And that's because there's a huge percentage of hazelnuts that go into the confectionery business, much more than almonds. So that means that for a hazelnut customer, it's very important that they get to a low confection, like a confectionery grade, low foreign material spec, because that's where that product is going. Now, when we look at the first part of the line, hazelnuts will also start as in shell. So that means we're going to want to use an x-ray, again, at the very beginning of the line, removing rocks, metal, glass, anything that can damage the cracker or damage the nuts inside the cracker. Some hazelnut customers will put a secondary machine here to pull out loose kernels because any loose kernels that go into the cracker can get destroyed. So you're better off saving those, but I didn't show that here, but some customers will do that as well. As we move into the full kernel line, what we're gonna see here is some similarities from some of the previous uh, slides that we looked at and also similarities to the almond industry. So one of the first things we wanna do here is we want to remove foreign material. So that first machine is targeting foreign material and only foreign material. Can it see insect damage? Yes. Does it remove insect damage? No. And that's the strategy that we want to see here. So when we're removing this foreign material, we want to make sure that that reject bin can be discarded. We don't want to have to sort through it again later on. We need to get the, the product off the property. Now the second machine, that's where we start getting into double-sided BSI plus. And that's because we have to start looking for more of the damage that could be on only one side. Damage like chimichato, which by the way is stink bug damage, just a quick side note on chimichato. Chimichato is the Italian word for uh, stink bug damage. But since that's where it basically originated, now everywhere in Turkey, which is now the largest producer of hazelnuts, all uses this Italian word 
to say chimichato and Georgia and Azerbaijan. And I got a call from a customer in Oregon not that long ago saying, hey, have you ever heard of this like semi-siato? Like I got a customer telling me to have this. So it's basically a universal term now that's used throughout the hazelnut industry. Now the third machine, now the second machine there, that's the insect damage, that's basically oil stock that's inedible. The third machine, you start getting into more quality defects. So in this case, you're looking for oblong hazelnuts. Hazelnuts that are, that are long instead of round basically come from the male hazelnut tree. And that can be a problem when you're coating it with chocolate or you're doing something like that. So you wanna to try to remove that there. You're also looking for color defects. So just like in the walnuts, this machine, you can get away with using mostly laser because you're looking for basically shape and color. And then just like I mentioned at the very beginning, hazelnuts are confectionery grade. Hazelnuts and chocolate go hand in hand. So that means that you absolutely cannot have foreign material leaving your plant when you are a hazelnut processor. And the reason we've got this fourth machine here is it's just simple math. You know, sorters all work based on percentages. And if you remove 98% of 200,000 pieces of shell, which would be basically 20% of shell coming in, then that gets you to 4,000. You remove 98% of that, that gets you to 80. You remove 98% of that, you got two pieces. 98% of that, now you're down into that less than one piece per ton, or maybe even one piece per truckload, and that's the target that they're trying to hit. Okay, so we've seen walnuts, we've seen pistachios, we've seen hazelnuts. Let's take a look at how this compares to a typical almond line, or what we would view as the ideal almond line. In the end, we can see that all of these different processes have the same goal in mind which is to segregate the defects based on value stream rather than just focusing on one single goal of getting the best possible product at the very end. And that's done for a really good reason. Now remember, these aren't just random examples that I'm pulling up. These are examples from some of the biggest and most profitable companies in the world and how they do it. And they keep those value streams segregated because they do not want to try to separate foreign material and insect damage and chip and scratch and all that stuff together. They wanna to keep them separate from the beginning. So when we look at this uh, specifically for almonds, this little image that I have over there is our ideal processing line for almonds. So in this case, we're using both X-ray and a 5C. We're using three kinds of optical technology to remove foreign material. That's X-ray, that's laser, and that's BSI. So the reject that you have from that is clean foreign material. The next machine that we have is double BSI. That's focused on insect damage and other inedibles. We want to keep that separate from the foreign material. So that's what you're coming off of that second 5C machine that you see here. That lines up also with what you're seeing from the other tree nuts, with the exception only of pistachios because you have that second step to remove the in-shell, remember. Okay. And then finally, we get into that QC stage. So if you're looking at walnuts, it's the thing that gets you to less than one piece per ton. If you're looking at hazelnuts, it's the thing that gets you to less than one piece per ton. And if you're looking at almonds, guess what? It's that thing that gets you to less than one piece per ton. Now in this case, we're using a 5C that's got fully loaded optics. Basically everything we have, we're throwing at this because we wanna see anything that's left. Pinhole damage, embedded shell, you name it, that's what we're going after. So now, your product is perfectly clean. The serious damage is out, the foreign material is out, but you still have cosmetic damage. You still have chip scratch and broken. And that's why we have the Tomer 5B at the very end. So just like we talked about with walnuts, this is the machine that can see all the way around 360 degrees around the product. So you can see a chip and scratch if it's on the side, if it's on the tip, if it's on the bottom, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it is, it's going to see it. And that's why we put this at the end. Now the best part is that since you removed all the foreign material and all the serious damage before this machine, your reject from this machine is clean. Yes, it's chip scratch and broken, but it's clean. You can use it to blend into blanchable standards or whole and broken. So this is really the, the ideal line layouts that we've seen for all of the different types of nuts, at least the major nuts that we see around the world, and how we compare them to almonds. There are plenty of people in, in the almond industry today that are not necessarily using this, and I just want you to know that we're here to help. So Tomra has been in almost every plant. Almost every processor has at least one piece of Tomra equipment. Uh, we've been in different kinds of nuts. We've seen every kind of uh, configuration you can imagine. We're, con we're used to dealing with old equipment and new equipment together. So my ask here is that you allow us to help. And we would love to help, and we really think that we can. So um, please come by and see us. Uh, we have our booth, which is just right over here. Uh, and we'd love to talk to you more. We're, we're available anytime. Thank you so much.
to, I think, probably 